Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Liu, welcome. And I was interested this morning, staff came in and said that they'd done a count that since 2001, the Congress has passed 137 laws changing the tax code. <laughs> now, as you know, almost always, these laws have helpful provisions. Nobody disputes that. But with each one of these changes, the tax system gets more incomprehensible, more dysfunctional, and more Byzantine. So my question to you is, do you support the idea that it's now time for the Congress to make a break with this idea of just passing these piecemeal changes, actually put a hold on these piecemeal tax changes, and actually move to the kind of long-term bipartisan tax reform that Senator Baucus and Senator Hatch and, and Chairman Camp are talking about? Should we put a hold on these piecemeal approaches? Senator, I definitely agree that we should do the big uh, job of tax reform, and but I think the question we do it is: now. Should we put a hold I, on the piecemeal approaches? Because as long as we keep passing them, I think it's going to be tough to get the long-term reform. The 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 the. the I hadn't actually thought about uh, whether there was an approach like the one you described. I'd be happy to have a discussion with you about it. My, uh, my own uh, predisposition is we should just get the big job done. Um, and uh, anything that makes it easier to do is worth considering. OK. You're going to have a large role in determining whether health care coverage is affordable for workers and families because the IRS determines who's eligible for ta uh, tax credits for health care and how much they'd be eligible for. Now, the IRS has already determined that affordability is going to be based on the cost of a worker's individual coverage, not the cost of family coverage. So we are going to have millions of workers and spouses and dependents in a kind of regulatory no man's land. Now, in the Affordable Care Act, a provision was added that would have allowed an employee to take their employer's contribution, either the individual or the family, and shop for a policy that best fit their needs at a price that they could afford. As we talked about in the office, that provision is no longer there. So we've got millions of people, these working class, middle class people, that are pinched, they're in the middle, they're unable to afford the family coverage offered through their employer and ineligible for the subsidy that could be used by dependents on the exchange. What do you think ought to be done to help them? Uh, Senator, um, I, I think that getting the Affordable Care Act in place, uh, there are a lot of hurdles between now and 2014. Uh, job number one is to get it up and running. Um, I would look forward to working with you and the members of this committee uh, to ask and answer the questions about are there gaps that need to be addressed after that. Uh, there are many things in the Affordable Care Act that uh, require a lot of work to get in place. And uh, I must say my first focus would be on making sure we implement the law. But then I'd be delighted to pursue with you uh, looking at solutions to remaining problems. Well, the New York Times and others in the press said that millions of low and moderate income families are going to be affected by this IRS decision. So this is not an abstract question. I appreciate your saying that you're going to work with me and others on it. This is an urgent matter. These are not people that ought to get hammered. They have done nothing wrong. We had a provision that would have made a real difference uh, to those families. It's not there anymore. I think it has to be a priority. Let me ask you about one other area. We talked about it in the office. And that is the electioneering that now takes place by tax-exempt social welfare organizations. And this stems from the wake of the Citizens United a case. There's been a proliferation of these entities that are organized under 501c4 uh, provisions of the Eternal Revenue Code, and they're really doing politics. They get a tax break as social welfare organizations, but they're really ripping off the tax code because they're not social welfare organizations. They're doing a politics. And I think some of my colleagues had a little bit of a taste of how outrageous this has gotten. Now, Senator Murkowski and I are going to be introducing bipartisan legislation to stop this, to take away that tax break when these organizations don't disclose. But I was very troubled by the fact that the IRS, what's called the Priority Guidance Plan, basically doesn't make cleaning this abuse up a priority. My question to you is, 
when confirmed, I believe you will be, I'm certainly supporting you, will you make it a priority to drain the swamp here? And this is not a partisan issue. This is an abuse, a flagrant abuse of the tax code. These aren't social welfare organizations. They're electioneering and they're doing it with the taxpayer's dime and they're not disclosing. Will you make it a priority to fix this? Uh, Senator, as a, as a general proposition, I believe that the tax laws should be enforced, enforced fairly. If there's something wrong here, it should be looked at. Um, you know, there's a, an appropriate distance between the Treasury Secretary and the IRS on enforcement matters, but on policy matters, I think it's entirely appropriate to ask that question. This, this is something that's yeah. way wrong, and my time is up, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.